because the previous next we have support version and we have a development version. Now he will share about support. Please welcome Mr. Rupert. Like from the company's perspective, 
and from the customer's viewpoint. I mean, why customers think it's important and why companies think it should be important. From customer's viewpoint, they want to use your product with less effort. Definitely, nobody wants to buy a product and then spend hours trying to figure out how to make this work. You won't really be happy. For example, like you buy a TV from a store and then it doesn't turn on. And you are reading the manual for hours, you are clicking on all the buttons in the remote and it's not turning on. You don't want that. You want a manual, that's why all products come with a manual. So you can easily find out how you can turn it on, how you can change the channels, how you can make the volume up and down and other stuff. So it's really important that we make it easy for them to use your product. If it's easier, they will love your product. Because you buy something and instantly you can start using it to love it. If you have to wait, they won't probably like it. They expect somebody to be there for them when they are in trouble. That's the same example. For example, like you buy a vehicle and you are having a problem, you need to go to office but the car is not starting. Now we are calling the car company and they are saying like, well, we will let you know in eight hours from now if we will provide support or not. Will you be happy about that? Nobody's gonna be happy about it. But if they say, well, okay, we understand the situation, it's very urgent and we give it a high priority. Let me check right now if we have any available technician and if we have, I will send it in to you way right now. Then you will feel like, okay, the company cares about me. So they know, okay, if I buy a car from this company, they will be always there if I'm in trouble or if I face any problem. So I will be stuck, I can move on. They're always there. That's what customers want. Now let's see why from let's see from company's viewpoint why support is important. Everybody wants to communicate with their customers. Now if you have a bigger customer base, it's not really easy to talk to them always. Like if, if you send them an email like, hey, which of our product do you like most? You can expect everyone will reply to you and you can't expect everyone will be giving enough time to explain things like, okay, for this reason I like this feature, for this reason I don't like this feature, but when you are providing support, they want to sp spend time with you. I mean, you don't have to chase them. They, they're already, they have already come to you. They're talking about the problem, so fix their problem first, and then they're, when they're happy, you can ask them, okay, what do you think? Which of our product is really better looking, or what feature do you want? or how can you be more happy with your company so you get some quality time with your customers or your clients. So this is really important for our business. Customer retention is highly less expensive than customer acquisition. You have a couple of clients who are already paying you, so you can make them happy easily because they are continuously paying you because they have a trust in you already. If they didn't trust you, they will be paying you. Now, if you want to acquire new clients or new customers, then at first you have to earn their trust. Because we don't give money to people whom we don't trust. We give money to those people, only those people whom we trust. So you have to earn their trust, and for earning that, you have to work more, you have to advertise, you have to spend money, and lots of other stuff. So it's easier to retain the customers who are already there. And you can make the people stay with you by providing better support because they are already with customers, they are with you, with better support, you can keep them for longer. Existing customers are more likely to pay you than new customers. As I already said, trust issue is there. When a customer is already paying you for six months, it's more likely that you will continue, but if you uh, acquire new customers, you don't know how much they trust you, or if they really need your product, but the person who is already using your company products for six months, that means definitely your products are within his needs range, and what he needs, that matches with your products. So it's easier, and customers who are already with you for a long time, they're more likely to pay rather than the new customers. So how you can make them happy? You can make your existing customers happy by providing better support. And there's more to discuss about this. I'm coming to this later. Customers will pay more for better customer service. For example, the same phone. 
just a form with same features, same specification, everything. One company says, okay, we'll provide support for two years. Anything happens to your form, we'll replace it or we'll fix it. We'll provide fully support. Don't worry about it. About it at all. Enjoy using it. And there's another company who says, okay, I'll be selling the product. You need to give me five bucks less, but we don't provide any support. You buy it, you take it, then I don't know you. <laughs> Normally, which one you will take? Will you buy a phone with no support at all, even though it's five bucks less? Normally, you wouldn't do that, and that's how everyone thinks. So, if you can provide any support, then the source will pay you more. As I was saying, uh, better customer support helps in retaining customers longer. Today you've got a new customer. And if you can give him better support, then he will think that, okay, i got somebody at my back to support me, to help me in my problems. So chances are high that he will stay. But you get a new client, he comes to you and he finds out that, well, these people don't care about me at all. And when I'm in trouble, I can reach them. I have to struggle really hard to get a hold of them. So if you want to make your customers stay, you have to provide them better support. It helps in building brand awareness. Like when people are happy, they talk to their friends and family about this. When I buy a nice phone and I'm happy with that, I'm totally happy, I'm getting a good service, the feature is nice, I'm, I'm more likely to tell this to my friends, hey, I got a new phone and the company is really good. They gave me a really great offer. They say, if I have any kind of trouble, they will help me fix that in two years. So, people who are already customers know about you, but the people around that customer will also know about you if you provide better support. And word of mouth company is really, really important. We trust more what we hear from our friends and family rather than looking at some random advertisements. That's what I just say. Word of mouth is one of the most powerful kind of advertisements. For example, I'm going in a car and I should see a billboard of a mobile company. They're saying, like, okay, we have the best coverage, blah, 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 stuff. And then I ask my friend, hey, how's this company? Have you used it? He's saying, like, okay, I have used it. I'm not totally happy about the coverage. Will you trust the billboard or will you trust your friend? You're going to trust your friends. So, word of mouth promotion is a really, very powerful type. And if you want your clients to say better things about you, you have to provide better support. Customer support is more important than price. As I say, four minutes ago, even if the price is a little bit higher, but if you can prove that you will provide better support and if your reputation is good, reputation becomes good when people talk good things about you. So it's all related. So customers are willing to pay more when they know that someone is at their back and they don't have any problem in using your services or products. So support is really important. Customer support helps in market research. Okay, when you are thinking of bringing a new product or service, you need to know what will go in the market and what people want, what people need. And for example, if you make rocket fuel in a country who doesn't have any rocket, that's not really a very good decision. You have to understand what this market needs. People who need to migrate their site, if you offer them optimization, it's not a proper way to communicate with them. Rather, try to find out what people need and how you can find out, you can talk to your customers because they're already paying you. So if you bring up a new product, you can ask them, well, what else do you think you need from our company? How we could do better? What more features you want? So they're already paying, they will tell you, okay, I think if you add this feature, I think your product will be better. And when you implement those features, they become more happy. Okay, the company listened to me. They gave my decisions a priority. So they become happy and they pay you more and a business more. Better customer support helps in improving employee turnover. How? You will suppose you're looking for a job. Now you have two offers. One from a big reputed company and one from a company they have never heard. So how the big company grew big? Because they have a bigger client base, they have a good reputation. Because probably they provide better support and their products are good, 
That's how a company grows and gets the good reputation. Obviously, you would like to work in the company which is more reputed. I mean, for example, you got an offer for a job in a company which is not very popular and people doesn't people don't say very good things about the company like their problems or blah blah other stuff. You wouldn't probably consider getting a job in there. But if you get an offer from a company about which people say so many good things, like the products are awesome, the people are awesome, they always help us, they give us priority, they give us importance, you will probably be part be a part of the company because you will be proud when you are part of a reputed and a good and large company. Which company? People think it's a good company. That gives you some kind of pride in working in that company. It also helps in new partnership and other opportunities. For example, new product is for migration and now another company does have a product for backups. Now, if you have a good reputation, like in the market people say like, okay, this company is really good, the product is good, their service is really good, when we have any problem, we get instant support. So other companies, if they are looking for something similar to your company, they will prefer your company. Because we are providing better support, so you are gaining more trust from the people. So there is a chance that your business will grow, so it's more likely that people will be interested here in partnership or other opportunities they will look into view rather than in the companies who doesn't keep who doesn't care about their customers. And when you provide better support, it makes your competition easier for similar type of product in a certain market. If you can provide better support for the similar product, more likely people will come to you because all the products are the same task. So what people will find, okay, I need to migrate, okay, there are a couple of options. But this company has very good reputation for providing support. I mean, if I face any problem in migration, they are always there. I can get them instantly. So instead of other companies offering the same product, they'll be coming to you. So it makes the competition a little easier. Now, dissatisfied customers spread the word more than happy customers. A person coming to your company and he is not happy with your service or he, you didn't give him priority, he is sad about your company, he will tell almost like everyone he may say, hey, they are not good, I didn't get a better service from them, don't go to them. The amount of this negative marketing is really high because normally we talk to people, okay, I didn't have a good service with them, I really didn't like their service, so it's risky for a business. Probably that was a specific case but for one bad customers, you are getting a bad reputation and probably you are losing some potential clients who may be get paying you. So it's really important to provide better support to make people happy so they are not dissatisfied and they are not spreading bad words about their company. So you can grow. Now let me show you some little statistics. Uh, little statistics. I won't go much detail into that. Like uh, with the statistics, I'll try to show why providing support is important or how the world is growing. Right now, 62.7% companies provide support through Facebook. Facebook is a social network. It's not for providing support. It's for making friends, having fun. But why companies are providing support through social media and Facebook? Because it's important and they want to reach you out. Because they want to provide you support. If support was not important, they wouldn't come to social media to provide you support. And uh, according to Dial America, uh, I have the link in the slide, I will upload it and share it with you guys all later. Uh, LinkedIn uh, has 8.5% share in social, uh, people, 8.5% companies try to provide support through LinkedIn, 10.2% people try to provide support through YouTube, and 18.6% companies try to provide support to Twitter. So these are the main social networks that if providing support was not important, these companies wouldn't think about providing support in the social media. Social media is for social, socializing with people. They're coming to that to provide support because it's important and it's really important to make the business grow. According to Converse Social, Support over Twitter increased 250 percent in three years. So, if providing support wasn't important, 
why would it grow this much? Because companies are now understanding if you can provide better support, you can make people happy and you will be losing customers at the end of the day. So we can easily understand that providing support is a really important thing and we need to put some effort on that. Uh, can you see the numbers? Okay. According to an article and study of Harvard Business School, in a case, a company increased 5% in customer retention and that earned them up to 95% more profit. That's a specific case, but that's how it can happen for a company too. According to them, if you can retain 5% of your customers, chances are there that you will get uh, uh, you will get to a better position by growth in your business from 25% to 95%. So retaining customer is important and providing better support is a quick and easy way to make your customers stay with you. Now, how we can provide better support? It's an endless topic. There are no specific ways. There are lots of ways and you can always improvise yourself. There are lots of new things, but I'll try to show some key points I mean you should really keep these things in your mind when you are providing support. At first, you have to have the willingness to help. If you are not willing to help, uh, you can't help. Then you have to have patience. Because when some, some customer is in trouble, he's panicking, he wants it to get fixed like right now. So you have to be really patient and listen to them, what the problem is, what they want from you. And then understand what they're saying. Try, at least try to understand what they're saying. If you don't understand what their problem is, you can provide them support. You have to listen to them. And then you have to identify exactly where the problem is because we are the technical person, but most of our clients, or maybe our clients, we can expect them to be a high level developer because if they could fix the problem by themselves, they would have done it by now. They wouldn't be needing you for support. So you have to identify and you have to be very friendly. Like if you are good to your customers, like if someone comes to you like, hey, my site is broken, you say like, why you bro broke your site? You can say it like that. You have to be friendly. You can blame them. It's not their fault. So you have to say, well, don't worry, we are here, we are your friends, don't worry at all, I can break, but let me help you. Just tell me what the problem is, let me try to help you. Then he will come down a little bit and he will eventually feel like, okay, I have a friend in that company, he is, willing, he is very much willing to help me, so now I can come down a little bit, then he will be starting to speak and then he can eventually solve the problem for you. You have to explain like for it. if you don't have support available right now i mean you have all your agents busy right now you can tell him bring us again in four hours period you can't just say that you can explain to him like okay i'm trying to get an agent for you right now let me see who is available and if no one is available right now you can explain okay all our agents are busy right now so it might take a little time I, we are really sorry for the delay but we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can so when we explain they understand and think, okay they might be busy i can be a little patient so you can buy some time from them for fixing their trouble implement many times you can tell your customers okay this is the way you can fix it here's the solution but you can try to implement it for them in not in all cases but they're in a problem, so if you tell them, okay, uh, let me try to fix this for you, and with his permission, take permission, you must take permission before before changing anything in his site, because I'll come to that later, there's a funny part about that. So ask, ask to him, like, can I make some little changes in this part on your site? If he says yes, you can tell him, okay. You can, uh, can I take a complete backup of your site, so you can roll it back to the current state if anything goes wrong. He takes the backup, then with his permission, if you implement the solution in his site, he will be more happy. Rather than, rather than uh, just giving him the solution, okay, follow this instruction and do it and your problem will be solved. Because he says that you are trying to help him more. You are implementing on behalf of them, so they feel relaxed. They feel it's easier to get support and they will be happier with you. Now, 
some key points. When we're providing support, you cannot say the client that you are wrong. There are two rules. The customer is always right. And if he's not always right, then read the rule of law. Another important thing is managing customer expectation. A customer comes to you and say, hey, I need to build a rocket. Can you build it for me? You say, sorry, we don't build rocket. Say, like, what type of company are you? don't build rocket. I need a rocket. I'm paying you. Well, you have to manage the expectation. Like, okay, you need a rocket. Uh, probably in the future, we'll grow so big that we'll make a big rocket. And probably you will be our priority customer, the first people who can try our rocket. But right now, we are a little busy over making plugins and tapes, so give us some time. We'll come to you. Right now, our capacity is building plugins and tapes, but definitely we'll build a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> behave as a human. Don't behave like you were a mission. Suppose a person came to you and said that, well, my site is broken and you will just copy paste the line. So he feels like this is an automated response. You are a human, you are working, so don't behave like you are a machine. We don't like to talk to a machine. When we have a problem, if somebody tells you, okay, go talk to the robot, he will give you answers. How you would feel. But if somebody comes to you and shows like, okay, I'm a human, I'm a person like you, so I know these problems can happen. So explaining things, behave like a human. Then you will be more happy, okay, I'm talking to a human or a robot or a machine. So this is really important part. Like, make him understand, you are also a human. You cannot work 24 seven. You can write 10,000 lines of code in just five minutes. So you have to be really be helpful as a human. And I, as I said before, you have, you really have to be very patient because most of the time when people are in trouble, they can Because you have a life site, it's broken. You have like one million traffic in one hour, so you are losing traffic, you are losing money, so you will definitely freak out if your site is down. So you have to be patient, you have to say, okay, I'm trying my level best, so as fast as I can, I'll provide you support, but tell me what the problem is. When you ask him, can you please tell me what the problem is? You can't expect, he will directly say, okay, this exactly is my problem. Because probably he doesn't know what the exact problem is. So you have to patient, you have to ask him different type of questions and try to identify what the problem is. <coughs> you have to be very friendly, that I explained a minute ago. Like people love to talk with their friends. I don't I don't love to talk with people who are not friendly. I mean I'm trying to talk to somebody and he is being very rude and he, he doesn't want to talk to me. I won't feel comfortable talking to if I go to a person and the person is really friendly, I'd love to talk to him more. So when you are trying to solve a problem, you need more details from him. So behave friendly, so he can feel like, okay, I'm talking with a friend. I can share many things like, probably he did something that broke the site. He might not share it with the company, but when he says like, okay, the company is friendly, I can share anything with them, they will explain more details and that will help you in fixing the problem and providing better support. high attention to details. You can't expect your customers to touch every key point and specify you, okay, I have a problem in exact this file, on this number, on um, uh, this number, on this line, at this function. He probably will be explaining this to you. But from his details, he's saying, okay, my images are not coming. So from this, you have to give attention to his work, okay, images, those are not showing. These are the key points. You have to give attention to that. Then you decide, okay, which functions are showing those images. Then you can identify, okay, where the problem might be. Check similar issues in the past. For example, uh, you have a plugin and your customer came to you and saying, like, okay, my site is showing a white screen. It's not showing anything. Now you can give more time to it, start troubleshooting from the ground, and then find out why this problem happened. Or you can quickly search the previous tickets and see if there was any previous issue like this, like this because there's a chance that he is having the same problem what another guy had before. 
So you can easily see the solutions provided for the similar type of cases or the same cases before. So you can provide him the solution faster. And when you provide fast support, people love it. Create rich logistics. It really helps you and saves you time. For example, uh, there are, are like things which you can store in your knowledge base. Knowledge base. So when people have some generic question or there are some solutions which are most frequently asked, you can point them to the knowledge base. So they can read the knowledge base, get an idea of okay, what the things are done. You can ask you, okay, I have read it, but I have confusion on this specific part. So you can tell him, okay, you can fix this part like this way. So that will cut down the support time and you can provide faster support. He gets the faster solution, he becomes happy, and he will eventually pay more, hopefully. Don't hesitate to apologize. We all are human, all softwares can have problems, but if you say like, no, why my software can't have any problem, I don't believe it. Don't be like that. If you find out that that was a bug or that was a problem from your side, that's not client's fault, you can apologize. That will make the patient, that will make them calm down. You can say like, okay, this was totally unexpected. We're really sorry for the inconvenience, but let me try to help. We'll try to fix this as soon as possible. That will calm him down and I mean, probably he won't get more anger. He'll come down and he will eventually be happy when you provide him the support. So don't hesitate to apologize and respond fast. That's what I was talking in different slides. You have to respond fast. Someone coming to your site, for example, suppose you provide support through live chat system and someone is in the queue for three hours. Any of you will stay in the chat queue for three hours? You won't. So what do you want when you have a problem? You want faster support. You mean as soon as possible the company should give you support and company should fix the problem. So try to cut down the waiting time Try to provide support as fast as you can. Empathy is very important. Your customer is having a problem and you are like cracking jokes to him, you are laughing without any reason, you don't feel good. So when he is in a problem, try to show that okay, you understand and you are not also feeling good about that, you are very serious about this issue and you are trying to help. So, Try to understand their emotion and go in that way. And continuously try to make your support better because every business is different, every client base is different, so you have to check all your previous tickets or supports, the pattern, what type of issues they usually come up with, what type of environment they're coming up with, what's their behavior, what they want. So if you analyze them, then you can easily identify the pattern. I mean, how you can provide better support to them by analyzing your previous tickets and all the customers, all the previous problems you have with. So these are the main things. Uh, I won't make it any longer. Who I am? I am Rupak Chaudhary. I work at WP MUDEV as tech support agent and I am an organizer of Dhaka Meetup chapter. That's all.
somebody would be taking license. Somebody with one license. And somebody is just for the fire again. What we do in our company, we don't provide custom development, but when somebody comes and say like, hey, can you just change the color of the header? This is beyond our scope. But we do it for them. Okay, it might take five minutes, but what's wrong in spending five minutes to make a customer happy and stay with you? But when people ask completely tough things, which is totally out of our scope, then you can tell him, okay, we can do this for you, we can do this for you, and we can do up to this for you. Is there anything we can do in our scope? Because currently we can't create a rocket for you, but we can create a ship. Would you like to have a ship? Probably you don't need it, but that's what I can do for you. <laughs> <laughs> so they will see like, okay, this guy is really trying, but it's totally beyond his scope. So he will try to understand, okay, probably I will have to find another company for rocket, but well, then sell ships. And you will not link them to a company that is that totally depends on a company uh, understanding with other companies. It's totally a company to company balance. For example, like if your company has affiliate with another company who provide customer support or who create rockets, you can easily divert the traffic to them. But if your company doesn't have relation to other companies or if your company doesn't think like uh, pointing to other companies, then that's a different scenario. Because if you don't have a strong agreement on all other stuff, it's kind of tricky. If you tell your customer, okay, go to this company, they will help you support. And if they fail, they will have a bad experience about you. Okay. Then we can that actually disclose the empathy part because they are the point on this that I will help you if you are an affiliate. I will help you. Yeah. Yeah. I saw this call and there was like a half a lot of these. They like they sell shoes, but they tell them what to do.
think we can have a book with more dynamic in terms of the discussion. Yeah, please. Real quick, I did find something that worked with me with that. I started using the time tracker for everything, even if it's a set project for any little changes. So I always have that to throw back. You know, I can send a PDF here so I went into it. The contract with the scope, and then when it starts to get too much, you know, I'll do a little excerpt. When it starts to get too much, I'd have that. I'd sit next to them and say, we well, continue on an hourly basis. And I give them a high hourly rate. When I did that, they started to respect my time a little bit more. That's a very nice word, and that's a very nice way to handle this. And I would say, if you have five support agents and there's nobody in the queue, if somebody comes and chats for five hours, there's no problem in providing that because you are not in a rush. When you are in a rush and everyone is occupying you for like seven to eight hours every day, then at what point you might think, okay, we have to wait, you know, or this customer is not that old the end. I mean, in that eight hours, you could have probably served with him more. So it's totally depends on the situation, if you're free or if you're busy, how long you go by your time. It's a case-based scenario, I think. You have to think it customer by customer. You can put a direct guideline on that. Okay, any more questions? My time is up. Yeah. yeah one last question. Uh, first of all, the <laughs> best. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, there was one last question. Fantastic presentation. Thank you. Well, that's an important question, but again, this is not a standard guideline, it differs from companies to companies. For example, if your car company comes to you and say, hey, they get a day, I will teach you how the whole car engineering is working, you will probably say, please do, do it for me. I don't want to get into that. But well, if it's something very simple, because if your customer is not that much technically advanced, you can make him learn JavaScript in the session or if you support. But if it's like simple CSS, simple tell you, okay, go to customize, additional cases, put these lines on there. So he learns, okay, I can do that. In case it depends, so these lines are not for all the companies or all the scenarios, but when you were doing it on behalf of them, they feel happy. Obviously. And sometimes people ask, okay, can you tell me what you did? Then you can obviously explain, okay, I did this in there, this resulted in this. So did you get your answer? Oh, yeah, yeah. So thank you, I'm supposed to be here. Thank you.